Well, good morning, everyone. Lovely to see you all. Richard and I were saying earlier on, it seems quite a little while since we met quite like this in exactly this format. Um, and it feels kind of familiar, which is worrying, really, isn't it? That um, this is now feeling a bit too familiar, maybe. Um, but after the Prime Minister's announcement on Monday, maybe we've got I don't want to think of it as a roadmap I think he's got the wrong word there but a timeline anyway um for possibly when we may be able to meet again in person yay that would be absolutely fantastic won't it um it really is lovely to see you all this morning and we're going to begin by picking up on a theme from that little countdown video um the line that said Jesus is the one who gives us freedom and I want you to think just for a moment, what is it that you need freedom from today? Um, later on in our meeting, we're going to be thinking about Jesus as the healer. And you'll have picked up on that from the handout and you'll have seen the Bible passage that we're going to be looking at and all that kind of thing. And I think there's a sense in which probably most of us need freedom from some form of whatever the opposite is of well-being. It's been tough, hasn't it, these last few months? And I think maybe these last couple of months, more so than the, the months before that. And we need freedom from that. We need healing, all of us. And if, if none of that well-being stuff means anything to you, well, certainly, certainly we need healing from our sin, don't we? We need forgiveness and the freedom that that forgiveness brings. So we're going to sing a song. It's a really short song. It's really only a chorus. And the hallway quartet are going to accompany us. And they're going to play this through twice through. You've got the words on your handout. Um, if you wanted to use your songbook, it's number 384. OK, so number 384 in your songbook. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Based on Psalm 136, verse 1. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, all you his people. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Why? For he is good. Let us praise. Let us thank. Let us celebrate and dance. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. So twice through, over to you, Hallway Quartet. Thank you. very much Greenwoods that's um a good little chorus there and it gives us a good kind of it's a bit like a Charleston almost isn't it I think there's um uh in the the triumph series or unity series I think there's a little arrangement um of that tune in there and um, that definitely picks up on the Charleston um rhythm so um there's that and then we're going to spend some time in in prayer and we're going to do this in a number of different ways. We're going to first of all use another chorus. Words again are on your handout. And if you want to use your songbook, it's number 397. Okay, 397 in the songbook. This is my desire to honour you. Lord, with all my heart, I worship you. All I have within me, I give you praise. All that I adore is in you. And then the second stanza unpacks some of that. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake, Lord, have your way in me. So we're going to sing this. And as we sing, I invite you to, to make this your prayer, to say 
these words to Jesus. This is my desire to honour you. Thank you, Hallway Quartet. <laughs> Oh, well, some of you know that a few weeks ago, I, a week or two back, I had a few days off and I've been doing some sewing. I love sewing, do you? Um, I've been making this kind of patchwork thing. So I've got my um, little sewing kit here and I thought I'd do some of this while we're here. Oh, hang on a sec. Ah oh, goodness me. Do you think Jesus sneezed? It's a question I often ask myself. Creator of the universe, fully God, putting aside his glory to become fully human. And what do all humans do? Sneeze. So he must have done, mustn't he? I mean, we know he cried. Shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. That's another thing that unites us, isn't it? Whether you're a duke or a dustbin man, everyone sheds a tear from time to time. And he ate and drank. So the logical conclusion would be that there was another human bodily function that he must have performed. But maybe we won't go into that just before our Sunday lunch. He sneezed, he wept, he ate, and well, he even slept. So why do I sometimes think that God doesn't understand what I'm going through at all. When work's hard, I'm feeling underpaid and overworked. When friends are flaky and it feels like I haven't seen them in months. When rent is high, but the quality of my house is low. 
when the kids are being difficult and it feels like I don't have anywhere to go, when it feels like all my partner and I ever do is argue, when you switch the TV on and everything seems grim, when someone close to me gets ill or dies, and when I just want to pack it all in. In these moments when the last thing I want to do is pray, I remember my sneezing, my weeping, eating, sleeping, saviour. He worked for 30 years as a carpenter and never left his hometown. That feeling when you're not able to reach your full potential must have been pretty close to home. When he started his ministry, he must have been exhausted from the constant stream of people. He'd take himself off to pray, to help him remember why he was doing all this. My friends may be flaky, but his abandoned him at the time of his greatest need, denying they ever knew him. That must have hurt him terribly. He went from town to town, never having a place to call his own. The message he was telling needed to be heard. He didn't complain about the lack of human comforts. He may not have had children, but he was followed around by 12 grown-up kids, bickering and questioning. His patience probably wore thin often, but he never failed to listen or answer their questions or keep believing in him. I may have lost loved ones, but Jesus knew death all too well. Hanging on that cross alone, gasping for breath, mocked as people asked why he couldn't save himself. He cried out to his father who couldn't even look. This death so powerful that the ground even shook. He understands my pain, yes. But in his death, our connection goes further than that. You see, as I choose to follow him on this road that often feels so hard, I have the promise that these things ultimately will be overcome. It doesn't mean that suddenly all these struggles go away, but I can know that he doesn't just help with them now. One day, I will see him face to face. Marion asked me if I would share a time of prayer with you. If we'd have been, <clears throat> if we'd have been in, in the army hall, and some of you will know the words, I think we might have sang these. He's the Christ of the human road. And he offers to carry our load. He's walking our way every night, every day, this Christ of the human road. He is human and yet so divine. And yet he knows your heart's sorrow and mine in all kinds of needs. He's a true friend in need. This Christ of the human road. Let's come close together in prayer. I believe the Lord is surrounding us just now in our own worship. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, the great physician for all those who are ill, injured, or in hospital because of the pandemic or are suffering loneliness or isolation. As people once brought to him, Jesus, the sick and disabled in Galilee. So we bring into your presence those we know whose physical, mental or emotional health are of concern to us. We especially remember family and friends and those on the pastoral list that we received a few days ago. In quietness, we remember them. And we remember ourselves. 
in this time of worship, we also <clears throat> remember our local communities, this country of ours and the world. We pray for peace, harmony, and an end to inequality. We too pray for recovery, especially that the availability of vaccines might be there for people of all ages, nations, and circumstances. Be with them and with ourselves as we continue with our worship and seek to be your presence in this world of yours. Amen. Let's say together now the, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. While Jesus was on his way to the ruler of the synagogue's house, a huge crowd of people followed him. They were pushing and shoving up against him. In the middle of this mob of people was a woman who had a terrible bleeding problem. Twelve years before, she started to bleed, and no matter what she did, she couldn't get the bleeding to stop. She visited many doctors and suffered terrible medical treatments. But instead of getting better, she was bleeding worse and worse. Not only that, she had to spend all the money she had just to pay the doctor. It was against the law for people with bleeding problems to come out in public. But when she heard what Jesus was doing, she decided she was going to go see Jesus. She said, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Carefully and delicately, she edged her way through the crowd. Sorry, mister, just passing through. Oops, so sorry, lady, just passing through. At last, she could reach Jesus. She squished between the people, stretched out her arm, and touched the hem of Jesus' clothes. Power went out of Jesus and into the lady. She was immediately healed. Who touched me? shouted Jesus to the crowd. Who touched me? Who touched you? asked the disciples. Everybody's touching you. Power went out of me, answered Jesus. It was me, it was me, said the lady. Trembling and very afraid, she fell down before Jesus and she told everybody why she was there and what had happened. Daughter, said Jesus, your faith has made you all better. Go home in peace. Lord, help me to remember to always reach pleased to see you all this morning. The weather seems to have changed in the last few days and what a difference it makes. There are still some people in special need of our prayers. You will have seen the list in this week's pastoral letter. Please do remember to pray for each other. The Lent course started on Thursday and continues this week. There's still some time to register for this, but please let Major Marion know so that she can email you the material. As you already know, the theme of our meeting today is Jesus the Healer, but there's a kind of sub-theme running through too, which is to do with giving. Later on, we'll be watching the self-denial video for this week. Please, to please try to work out how you will get your gift to us. Our altar service takes place next Sunday, the 7th of March. Right from when we first started holding our Sunday morning worship on Zoom, we have made time in the middle to reflect, reflect prayerfully. We 
we've asked some of our different musicians to play something for us as our offering spot. Today, we're asking you to consider using an app called GIFT, spelled G-I-V-T. It's an app which is free and easy to download onto your phone. I've already downloaded it, which will then enable you to make an offering from right from where you are. If that's at your desk, your bed or wherever you might be currently. As long as you have your phone and you have the app downloaded onto it, you'll be able to put something on the offering plate. You get to choose the amount, of course, however large or small. We will continue to use this when we meet in person at the hall. This is for those spontaneous cash gifts. It is not meant to replace your standing orders. Those are still a better option for regular giving. Major Marion will give some more info in the pastoral letter. But this gives us another excellent way of being able to give. Please watch this video and then consider downloading the app, maybe while we're watching this video. Alan will then pray with us.
Shall we pray? God of the universe, thank you that your promises are sure. You are faithful. We can rely on you. Your word says that we will find joy in offering our time, talents, and money to meet the need of others. Help us to give freely, sacrificially, and cheerfully towards the work of your kingdom. May you cause the seeds that we sow to grow into well-watered, fruitful trees of life. Lord, bless us and keep us. Make your face shine upon us. Turn your face towards us and give us peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hello and welcome to the Walk of Our Fields for this year's Self-Denial Appeal. This week I'll be talking to Melinda Boone in the Philippines Territory. Melinda is now based at Divisional Headquarters, but she's worked in anti-human trafficking and modern slavery for the best part of a decade. She features in the Salvation Army's Helping Hand Appeal films from last year. While self-denial money doesn't directly support anti-human trafficking work, it does help fund some of the infrastructure that makes it possible. That means people like Melinda can visit groups, including CORE, so that people are more aware of the risks to themselves, their children and their wider family. And the risks are very real. When wages are low and jobs are scarce, the offer of good money for working abroad is difficult to resist. The reality is often forced labour and exploitation. Her team also supports survivors of trafficking as they return home and reintegrate with their families. Sounds to me like Melinda's got a lot on her plate, but it turns out that's not all she does. Hi, Major Melinda. C can you hear us? Yeah. Hello. How are you? I'm doing really well, thanks. How are you? And where are you? I'm here in General Santos City, that is somewhere in South Cotabato, in the province of South Cotabato, in the Philippines. So I am here, um, the Divisional Secretary for Program and Youth in Mindanao Island Division, Philippine Territory. Wow, that is a really long title. I hope you can get that on a badge somehow. That... <laughs> <laughs> so can you tell me a bit about your, what your role involves? Yeah, so as a um, Divisional Secretary for Program, I look, uh, I, I am the overseer of the core program in the division as well as in the youth department. And I have also an additional role as the national contact person for modern slavery and human trafficking. So that is uh, another challenging role. 2020 has been a big year for, for our world. What's it been like on your side of the planet in Philippines? Yes, um, the COVID-19 pandemic, pandemic really brings um, dramatic change in the way we used to it. Uh, like for example, in the core, especially here in Mindanao, because not all of our comrades have internet connection. And we only use a messenger, you know, just for text. But we don't have face-to-face -face worship, especially for um, youth activities, because eight and below are not allowed to go out in their homes. Okay. People under the age of 18 are not allowed out of their homes. Is that what you said? Yeah, below 18, they should stay at home from March until now. That is one of the government restrictions. So we, we have also what we call now Sunday lockdown. So nobody is allowed to go out every Sunday. So meaning to say we don't have worship on Sunday, but we rely on online house worship. But this December, we start now the face-to-face -face with 50% um, of the congregation can attend. Well, that's good that things might be easing. What's the impact of the coronavirus pandemic been on um, modern slavery uh, and, and human trafficking? Yeah, our Department of Justice 
have recorded almost threefold cases, especially on online sexual exploitation um, of children. So our cases really uh, has a dramatic rise up. So we are uh, right now there is um, there is an ongoing online awareness campaign about online sexual exploitation to protect the family, our children. You know, so most of their time are on internet. Yeah. So it's great to see the Philippines really spearheading the army's uh, response to this in in your in your part of the world. What what does resilience mean to you um, in these days? Yeah, we Filipinos are really resilient people. <laughs> Just recently, we have this typhoon Ulysses that damages a lot of um, regions, especially in national capital regions. We're under a lot of floods, and really, it is so hard. But then we have this smiling spirit that we can still smile amidst of storms, amidst of many troubles that is happening around us. That's really encouraging uh, to us. What would you say the things that you're learning about yourself and life because of the coronavirus pandemic? We learn a lot. When I was in my core, in that little core, I have a lot of vegetables garden at the back. So every Monday, I, I, I go around with my comrades and bring them some vegetables. And our neighbors who are also struggling for their daily needs. So they will also knock to my door and said, oh, uh, Major, can I have this? <laughs> can I ask for your papaya, for your other vegetables? Because we need to survive. And that is really, I, I am thankful for that um, opportunity, you know, to extend help and also to, um, to show practical love to my people because we are also challenged. <laughs> but still, we cannot stop helping others. Yeah. So we're just really grateful that um, we could have this time together all the way from London to the Philippines. Yeah, God bless you and God bless the Philippines Territory. Yeah, thank you so much. It is an opportunity and I'm so happy to be part of what you're also doing. God bless you, Captain Ben. Thank you too. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> In next week's film, I'll be making a call to Pakistan and talking to Fozia Columbus. So that's the Philippines. I'm just wondering if Commissioner Jill knows that officer. I'm sorry, Richard, to spring this on you. Can we find Commissioner Jill? There she is. Did you know that officer, Jill? Yeah, she's a, an amazing lady. She's doing a great job, great job. Brought back many memories. Brought back many memories and um, she's in a very challenging part of the country at the moment and um, and as well as the under 18s not being allowed out at all, it was the over 65s as well. So um, it's been really tough at both ends of the scale. Yeah, yeah. So are you still in touch with that Melinda, Major Melinda? No, I haven't been, but uh, no. okay. it's more a case of knowing who she is. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay. It's great to have that sort of link, isn't it? You know, we watch mm. the video and, um, you know, to know somebody that's worked in the Philippines, to have mm. somebody who's worked in the Philippines as part of yeah. that court, it gives us a real kind of, I don't know, a, a different kind of link, I guess. Mm. It does bring so, it all back too. So does that make you sad? Mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> miss it yeah okay well we'll move on then shall we because i don't want you to cry on screen that would not be good <laughs> okay so our bible reading this morning is um luke's gospel chapter eight and we're beginning to read um at verse 43 just with a little link into that so people were crowding all around jesus in the crowd was a woman who had been bleeding for 12 years <clears throat> she had spent everything she had on doctors, but none of them could make her well. As soon as she came up behind Jesus and barely touched his clothes, 
her bleeding stopped. Who touched me? Jesus asked. While everyone was denying it, Peter said, Master, people are crowding all around and pushing you from every side. But Jesus answered, someone touched me because I felt power going out from me. The woman knew that she could not hide, so she came trembling and knelt down in front of Jesus. She told everyone why she had touched him and that she had been healed straight away. Jesus said to the woman, you are now well because of your faith. May God give you peace. Amen. Major Steve is going to unpack that a bit for us. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Marion, for that uh, Bible reading. During lockdown, during the pandemic, I've had every sympathy with the many retired doctors and nurses, those in the medical profession who um, have offered themselves to assist on the hospital wards and in the uh, vaccina vaccination centres most recently around the UK, only to be deterred by all the paperwork and checks required. I too found the whole process of recruitment and training to become chaplain at Zachary Merton Hospital here in Rustington, very slow and frustrating. But amongst all the boring stuff has been the reading books, such as these. Hospital chaplaincy in the 21st century and the Christian theology of chaplaincy. This might be your cup of tea, but I found within, within both of the books references to the legend of St. Martin of Tours and his cloak. The saint lived during the reign of the Roman Empire Emperor Constantine the Great and he was a member of the Imperial Cavalry stationed in Armines in what we know as France now. He's remembered because as a young Roman soldier he came upon a shivering beggar close by the city gates on a cold snowy winter's day. We've, we've had those experience recently. And the legend relates how he cut his cloak, his thick woolen capella with his sword before sharing it with the man. It was an act of compassion, but in a dream Later that night, St. Martin, as we now know him, recognised that beggar as none other than Jesus. What does Matthew, Matthew 25, verses 34 to 40, say about care, compassion and Jesus? I was hungry and you gave me something to eat, thirsty, and you gave me something to drink, a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me, in prison, and you came to visit me. Truly, truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Now, I would love to show you another flowing black cloak, but Margaret lost hers some years back. It was tailored for her by my mother in the 1970s. And Margaret... 
she wore it with great pride, both when doing her nursing or out and about in Salvation Army uniform. It's been used over the years as a blanket, as a prayer mat, and all things in between, and somehow has disappeared into that, I'm sure you've got one, that Houdini box that makes everything disappear inside. Somewhere, we don't know. Google, Google Amazon, Google cloaks, and you find that Amazon doesn't sell them. Like the starched aprons and nursing caps, the hats that nurses wore years ago, capes are very much out of fashion, except for pagans, druids and the like. But why travel to Stonehenge or Glastonbury? Why limit ourselves to Sherlock Holmes were? or that of a Roman soldier. When we have this even greater story that Marion brought to us a few minutes ago and is in our, on the, um, the sheet, <clears throat> on the service sheet, the story of Jesus and the healing of the sick woman in Luke chapter eight. Jesus here within the story is so much of his life he wore a poncho-like outer garment, a, a tallit, not unlike a cloak. But within the Jewish tradition, finished off with special knotted fringes, tzitz attached to the four corners. Jesus, as we remember, was already responding to the cry of Jairus concerning his daughter who was dying. Jesus was in a hurry. But within the confines of a, we imagine a, a narrow village street, his progress was impeded by the gathered crowd. And then he stopped who touched me? Everyone within the crowd denied it, whilst his disciples went on to suggest it was simply the, the press of the crowd. But Jesus insisted, someone touched me. I know that power has gone out of me. Then seeing that she couldn't go unnoticed, this, this woman came forward, trembling, falling at his feet. And in the presence of all the people, she told why she had touched the hem, the holy knotted fringe of his cloak, and how she'd been instantly healed. To which Jesus said, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. I love this story, this, this miracle. We're told she'd had a, a discharge of blood for 12 years. And though she'd spent, as we saw in the film that was played earlier, though she'd spent all her money on physicians, on doctors, no one could heal her. Talk about lockdown and social distancing. She had been social distancing for 12 years. Israel had laws for contagious diseases in the Old Testament. We've got echoes today of Sage, of Boris Johnson, Matt Hancock, and protecting the NHS. She was required to keep herself at arm's length from polite society and associate herself living as if a leper. 
But not only had she spent all her living on quack doctors, most probably her husbands and friends had also left her. Unlike many today, suffering isolation. All hope, all hope during this time of social isolation had gone. We can relate to this woman. She reached out to Jesus and found, surprisingly, that Jesus was the one who was contagious. She came up behind him and touched the fringe of his garment and immediately, verse 44, her bleeding ceased. She didn't get Jesus dirty. He made her clean. She doesn't transfer her impurity to him. Jesus transfers his purity to her. She doesn't give him her sickness. He gives her wholeness and health. Jesus is the great physician. It is he who takes on our sickness to heal and make us whole. And like the woman, we're invited to reach out to the one who's already reaching out to us. But within today's crowd, within today's crowd, let me add, it's not just Jesus and me, Jesus and you. We recognise the healing presence of the NHS, of the doctors, the nurses, the physiotherapists, the pharmacists, and so many more. And to that great list of heroes, we add family and friends. The support, the help, the encouragement they're giving. And may I add to that list of heroes, the vast cloak wearing Christian community, you and me, because each one of us is also a potential conduit, a potential conduit of God's healing power. And may that potential be utilised. May God bless you. And may there be healing through God's ministry, even if it's YouTube, at a distance. May God's hand, God's presence, touch you too. Lord, hear today my great need, I am feeling, wilt thou not visit my soul once again, I long to
Just a few moments. Steve, you're on mute still. Could you unmute yourself? Right, we're back again. The closing song, Christ for the World We Sing. We're going to sing verses one, two and four. Christ for the world we sing. The world to Christ we bring. If you'd like to turn to the service sheet, we have the Lenten prayer. If you'd like to quietly share these words with me. Loving God, 
in our suffering and joys, in our relationships and daily lives, we ask that your kingdom come, open our eyes to your presence, open our ears to your call, open our hearts to your love, open our ways to your will, open our actions to your compassion, open our pain to your peace, and in doing so, open our world to your hope, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Jesus, so dear to us. Jesus, be near to us. Jesus, give ear to us each as we pray. Jesus, whate'er be tied. Jesus, be friend and guide. Jesus, be by our side now and for a. Amen. And thank you, Marion, Richard, and the whole way quartet for the support and all the work they do behind the scenes. And it's time for coffee. Some of you have got your flask all ready. If you're disappearing off, others, um, we can start to enjoy our drink. May God bless you and. If anybody wants to share if the, the message, the ministry, the worship today has spoken specifically to you. You've got Marion's phone number. I'm sure you've got mine. There are people who you can contact and uh, we'll listen, we'll support, we will minister. But without uh, throwing that to one side, let's enjoy our coffee and the fellowship that's so valuable, we appreciate. Let's share that uh, time of refreshment too. Amen. Thank you, Steve.